Hello, all you beautiful law school students. It's me, Leslie Juvenicare at lawschoolforvisuallearners.com. It's been a while. Yes, I finished 3L, three years of law school, but not quite done. I'm in 4L and beginning that at the end of this month on April 30th, 2023. So for those of you who are in traditional law school, you might not know that those who are in correspondence programs in California or in part-time programs, there's a four-year option. And I opted to do the four-year option um, simply because, you know, studying at home and getting to be with my children while they're growing up was essential and critical for me um, and my personal values. So I chose this path and it feels like a dream having finished three years so far. And yet, I feel like I'm over the worst part of it. And I want to share some of my insights that I had gleaned from this last year of 3rd L, um, in which I took civil procedure, evidence, constitutional law, and professional responsibility. It's a lot of subject matter to do on your own at home. And yes, you have online lectures and you can attend live classes. I chose not to because they were scheduled at my dinner time with my kids or my volunteer time. So I chose to watch the recorded programs at home. And I feel like, you know, it was a lot. And I've heard other lawyers who've gone to traditional schools and I've heard them say that they're very impressed by it because at traditional law school, you can work with a team of other students and have everyone work together and build an outline and read the cases and help you manage your study schedule and your study load. Um, where correspondence school, you just don't have that. You don't have that type of um, support system. You don't have that from your professors and you don't have that from your classmates. Um, and especially in a school, an online school, where it's really designed to get you to fail. It's not really to get you to succeed. It's to get you to fail. Um, and for good reason, because not everybody should become lawyers, and it shouldn't be super easy and super accessible to become a lawyer when you're in charge of somebody's estate, their health, their family life, those kinds of things. Of course, it should be difficult to become a licensed attorney. But at the end of the day, I, I will say as a professional adult educator, and I spend a lot of my volunteer time in children's education, um, you know, law school could be better. It could be a lot, lot better. Um, but for me, having studied on my own, I know I could not do it without my tutor, Scott Carone. Can we give a shout out to every now and again? Um, who, Because he's just provided so much comfort for me. And yeah, he's, you know, just a straight, regular tutor. But having somebody just give it to you straight and talk you through things or sometimes listen to you when you need somebody to have your ear on the stresses and the struggles of law school and to remind you that you're capable and you can do it and they believe in you. I think that's everything. I think it really is everything. So, you know, if you don't have classmates or a professor or a loved one to encourage you on that level, I highly recommend a very qualified tutor to be that emotional and psychological support for you. So I also wrote in my blog update that, you know, one of the most important things that students contact me about having my professional experience and emotional intelligence and executive life and career coaching is, you know, the stress and the strain and the struggle of managing an adult life in law school as an adult learner. Um, majority of law school students are, what, 23 to 27 years old. They don't really have a lot of life experience, professional experience. They're, you know, wet behind the ears and um, and haven't had the experience of dealing with heavy, heavy, heavy hitting issues. Um, and I talked about that in the blog. You know, issues like um, racism and inequality and child abuse and neglect or divorce or, you know, bankruptcy, real serious adult issues, young people in their 20s just don't have that life experience. They don't. Um, and I, as I say this as somebody who's overcome domestic violence and neglect and poverty and all these things. Help, there's a difference between going through something yourself and helping somebody go through it um, and going through the other side of a trauma or a challenge and as a coach and somebody who's done that for a living for 14 plus years. Um, it takes a lot of skills, but it takes a lot of psychological resilience. I don't think law school teaches you how to do that. And the reason why I know this is because I've coached some of the top lawyers in America. Um, 
you know, in serious issues, murder trials, um, you know, uh, political crucifixions, uh, you know, energy scandals, these kinds of things. And you have to be able to control and master your own emotions, your psychological state when somebody's attacking you or, or challenging your credibility or your integrity. And law school doesn't provide that. It really doesn't. Um, and so a lot of students have contacted me and asked me, you know, how do I deal with that? And I wrote this past year in 2020 to 2023, not 2023, but 2022, I wrote uh, four books and published them and they're all on emotional intelligence. And I talk about what I've learned throughout my entire career and, and how I've learned over my own personal challenges. And it's important that you learn emotional mastery and psychological resilience and learn how to uh, master your attention and the direction that you put your mind into and what thoughts and uh, moods that you entertain. Um, because law school, in so many ways, as I've explained um, to people who've contacted me, is that law school is a mirror. It's a mirror of every single thing that you believe about yourself, your concept of yourself, your concept of life, your concept of others, uh, what you think you're capable of doing, uh, your capacities, your strengths, and it puts that mirror and it shows you where you actually are and where you aren't. And for me, it definitely was that. And I explain, you know, if you look at the challenges that you experience in law school, whether it's at correspondence or online or in regular law school, you know, you really have to take a hard look at yourself, your ability to manage stress, deadlines, other people's emotional problems, psychological problems, financial problems, political problems, all sorts of types of problems, and how you deal with people in resolving conflict, um, internal conflict or external conflict, legal conflicts. You really have to evaluate all of that, and that is, you know, the playing ground for dealing with this version of yourself that you think you are. And you might not even like that version of yourself, and it's your opportunity to change uh, who you think you are, or completely abandon it, and really surrender. What I say, surrender to God and let God lead your life. Um, but if you don't like who you are in law school, you're not going to like who you are outside of law school. And so I bring that up in my blog, and I raise that issue now. Because I think that if you don't know how to manage stress now, you're going to turn to drugs and alcohol. You're going to turn to um, sex, adultery, um, abuse, self-harm, those types of things. And I know that from experience with having worked with lawyers. Um, the, one of the biggest things is drug and alcohol abuse. And if you even look at the professional responsibility rules, I mean, there really is not much on those. Because it's very well understood that to cope with a lot of stress, people use substances. Um, or have affairs or engage in behavior that's risky or self-harming. So learn how to take care of yourself. Make it your job. So in terms of the substantive material, you know, it is a lot of memorization. You have to memorize it all. But I think it helps if you learn to apply it um, and talking it over with people. But you're never really going to learn all the substantive material in terms of, you know, um, black letter law and all those exceptions and all of the sub element rule changes and without actually studying and practicing essays and doing questions you're just not going to know it you have to put it into practice and what better way than having to challenge yourself and your ability to recall but understand and apply the rules um, and that requires essay practice and what I have done is had my tutor look at my analyses um, and not every professor is going to like what you put down. They're not. They're going to look at your paper and go, eh, you could have analyzed more. You could have done this. You could have done that, whatever. And it may help you. It may not help you, their feedback. But um, you just have to practice it. And you have to get used to thinking about the rule in an applied concept and how it plays with other rules and how it changes the outcomes. So practice is probably the key. I, I spent six months practicing essays, studying them, studying the answers, studying how the words are written in the rules. Um, it was really six months of practice, practice, practice. And then the other six months was, you know, reading the rules, learning about them, doing the assignments, essays, mini thesis papers, um, definitions, assignments, those types of things. You have to do all of that. And that's kind of like, I call it busy work. Some alumni from my school call it busy work. But it all builds up. And, um, and, it, and it's really, to be honest, as much as it is, as, as stressful as it all is, I think, you know, um, in terms of 
the whole scheme of your life to do all of this um, work, sitting down and focusing for six to eight to 10, 11 hours a day, depending on how much you study, um, you know, it all adds up. And it's, they don't ask you for very much. They ask you to really know the rules, to apply the rules, and to be able to complete an assignment and turn it in on time. And it's, they're not really asking you much, really, they're not. Um, but do I think law school prepares you to be an exceptional lawyer? Absolutely not. You'll need an internship, you'll need to, to work for somebody, you'll need to get professional hands-on experience. There's, there's no way that law school can prepare you to be a kick-ass lawyer right out the gate. No, you'll have to work for somebody and really learn, learn the ways of the trade. Um, but you know, and I also answer the question, people ask me all the time, what do you want to do, Leslie, with your own law degree? Um, I have had my own practice. I've built my own clientele for 14 years in Europe and in the United States. And I could tell you private practice is not for me. I am not going to start at the bottom of a giant law firm. Um, that's, I'm not that partner track. If you ever saw that Netflix film, not in that, not interested in being somebody's like peon for six years. No, <laughs> um, but right now I've been volunteering for my kids' nonprofit school, and and I serve on the board of directors, and I've really enjoyed doing that. I love education, I love teaching people, and I love supporting people to get the resources that they need so they can get the education that they deserve and that they require to fulfill their journey and move on to the next steps of their own personal development. And uh, using a law degree is very, very helpful. I, I use it now in so many ways. And I did take a few courses. I took a course on corporate governance and um, grand jury investigations at um, Cornell Law. And that was great. The professors there were awesome. I studied impact investing at Harvard Business School Online. And that was really fun. Made a lot of friends, networked a lot. And then I studied uh, corporate governance and ESG investing at UC Berkeley Law. And that was... That was really cool. It was um, kind of like an intro, but there was a lot of prestigious uh, professionals in that realm, um, in tech and finance in California. So got to talk with people who work in all these companies and, and see that they're moving in that direction too. So that was cool. I was really, really busy last year and hopefully as 2023, 20, uh, 2024 winds down um, and I finish this degree, I take things a little bit easier but then again I'm one of those people that just kind of goes for it in life who knows what I'll do next but I feel very satisfied I feel very grateful and in the next video I'll talk about you know does law school make you fat sad and sick and I answer that question and how to deal with it so um, thanks for joining me all you beautiful law school students this is Leslie Juvenic here at law school for visuallearners.com if you're interested in our visual outlines, check them out. As always, free shipping with Media Mail. And uh, I wish you the very best in all your studies. May the rest of your life be the best of your life.